<laughs> hey, you know, it's a good idea to use the right tool for the right job. And this fine piece of equipment here is the wrong tool for this job. And I'll show you what I'm up to. Hey, I hope you're all having a good day. It is still cold and nasty outside, so I come in here to get warm and just do a couple things. So what I'm up to now is uh, Rob had some of these. Uh, this is uh, some scrap aluminum, some kind of uh, conveyor roller, I think. And uh, well, what I'm doing is I'm salvaging it. And so I'm taking them and cutting these these parts off here and uh, then I can get about an inch and an eighth to an uh, inch and a quarter well under inch and a quarter uh, clear material here that I can use and you know there's uh, an abundance of aluminum around here shorts scraps and stuff but I'll tell you something, in my experience, things like that just don't last. So I'm going to take advantage of it uh, as best I can. <laughs> you know, you go and order an uh, inch and eighth uh, piece of aluminum from somewhere, it's going to cost you. So this, this is uh, free. And Rob pointed out these ends here. They have a steel pin and some set screws. But uh, you can use them as knobs. <laughs> so I, I think no part of this is uh, uh, going to be wasted. Okay, I'm going to get the camera on a tripod and show you the typical old thing I do here. Hold on. Okay, salvaging this uh, aluminum here. Uh, now, this uh, has a hole in the end. So I got old broken off uh, center drill here that I'm going to run in there like I did here so I can, you know, get a good center on it. And I'm using a four jaw chuck here because my eight inch three jaw is a light duty chuck and I really want to get a good grab on this. If I was just going to use the three jaw, I would pull out that hundred plus pound bison solid steel three jaw. It's got the power to hold this. So I'm using a four jaw chuck and I'm, I'm truing this up. Let's see where we are here. Truing this thing up a bit here. And it looks good. Now, one of the things that I want to point out, I'm going to true the end, uh, is you want the jaws to be even pressure. So when you when you get it to the point where it's true, off, often I have to slack the jaws, get them a little bit loose, and then go around and start tightening them evenly. If you have like, let's say, two jaws that are real tight, it's going to deflect the end that way. So you want the jaws even, and we're going to knock the end true, okay? And get the, to get the most uh, of the material out. And if you're doing repair work, oftentimes you're modifying stuff. And uh, uh, repair, modification, and stuff like that. So you're putting uh, already manufactured parts in the machine and you want to get it true to like, uh, like let's say this almost looks like a spool out of a hydraulic valve. So you'd want to get, if you want to modify it, and sometimes you do, uh, you can uh, work the edges of them a little bit. Uh, the uh, hydro guys know what to do and they'll bring it to you and want some material removed. And those are very hard and I use the Monarch 10W for that. That's one of the repair jobs I do with that. Okay, or modification. So I got this thing uh, good and true guys, so I'm going to snug it pretty good. I was playing around with these and seeing how much uh, I could take off and I found that it's best just to go slow and easy with this material and the shape. 
Got a little bit of run out there. That's high. So a few here. And here. Alright. Okay, that's with a couple of thousands. I'm gonna get it over here. See where we're at. Okay. Okay, that's high there. It looks like about seven or eight thousandths out. I'm going to need a pretty good little hammer stick for that. Let me find one. Okay, here's something. This brass one should work. So that's high there. You got to watch out with indicators. Some of them won't tolerate this. They don't wrap it well. That's why I use it. Okay, it's high there. I'm going to push on it, give it a smack. See what happens. I knocked it too far. Okay, that's high. Getting better. About five thousandths. I think it was like eight. Yeah, about four. Okay, we're at about two and a half. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to get it better than that. It's cold outside, so the heat come on. That's actually pretty good. Ah, I went too far. I don't know. Oh, wrong way. That's high. Oh. Two and a half thousandths, I'm calling it good. Okay, I'm going to fire this machine up. It's a royal quad bearing. Best center I ever used. Okay, I'll get a better angle and start cutting.
Now that's quite a sight. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, I'm glad you could join me on my uh, aluminum uh, salvage. <laughs> Made a big mess, but I got some nice chunks of aluminum. Now, this is a nonprofit channel. And it's not monetized and never will be. And uh, that's, a, that's a whole nother story. Maybe I'll do a, a video talking about all of that. But anyway, this is more educational and less entertaining than, let's say, some guy faking uh, manual uh, machine work using a CNC. <laughs> it goes on. Well, I need something to further your education that are interested in old things, and that's a faceplate for that axle set. I've been looking and looking, and I uh, haven't found any kind of reasonable deal. And when I wasn't looking, those things are all over the place. So anyway, this is what I need. I need a faceplate. 15 to 16 inch, it doesn't have to be in perfect condition. D16 cam lock mount, okay? All right, that aside, I got a faceplate on here, and uh, this faceplate here fits the spindle perfectly on this uh, Monarch 10 E. And the reason I want uh, the faceplate for uh, the axle sun is it's a lot easier to uh, video it. It's just a bigger machine, a lot of, just a lot easier. But anyway, this faceplate here, one of the very earliest videos I did on the other channel, um, some bully, one of the bullies from, uh, of course, the, you know, the stinking internet forums, made some snide remark about this, about a faceplate. And uh, I, I don't get it. You know, I don't get uh, people's attitudes. But I, I, well, I seen the other day, I was just kind of coming around, and uh, a young guy does electronics, found this really interesting lathe, and uh, rebuilt the headstock, had plain bearings, it's a quality machine, I can't recall what it is. And some bonehead got on there and goes, you're no machinist. And I, and I go, well, what's it? He doesn't have to be. He just, you know, he's happy to get this lathe, and he's a fully capable person, and it'll uh, be a great addition to the electronic things he does. It will. Well, anyway, I go and take a look at this guy, and uh, of course, nothing on his channel related whatsoever with machine work. So if you younger people, I'm going to tell you how to, how to slam the bullies right off. Because every single one of them that pulls that crap does not have any related content on their channel. Nothing. So nobody, nobody that uh, is doing videos on YouTube machine work is, gonna, is really going to bother you unless, <laughs> unless it's me going after some of these frauds and uh, grifters and stuff. And I'm not a grifter, man. You know, I, it, it, more power to you if you can beg free machines uh, out of people and stuff. But I got all the machines I want, and I'm likely not to get too many more. Uh, that's another story. But anyway, I don't want any free machines. I need a faceplate, okay? Uh, if you want, to learn how to use those secret tool maker buttons. I thought I'd throw that out there, you know. And I hope you all have a great day. And uh, I've got a lot more videos to make and tricky stuff. Okay.